Trojans, the only undefeated team in Class A this season, will also have home field advantage. But the mighty Bowie Division winner will have to get a, uh, buy a solid South Portland squad, which went five and three, capturing the current division. The Red Riots feature rough and ready Scott Millington at six foot, 182 pounds, who picked up tough yardage uh, often up the middle. In the season finale, Millington ran 245 yards on 20 carries and scored two touchdowns. And South Portland won this year's Battle of the Bridge uh, contest with Portland 27 to nothing. Thornton Academy is uh, blessed with an outstanding receiver in John Gus, the favorite target of quarterback Dave Robinson. We'll tell you more about both teams as uh, we go along. Right now, the kickoff and Joe Gould. Jim Anderson of South Portland approaches the ball, booms it down. Picked off in there by number 12, Summer. Summer's still on his feet with some good running room, and he brings it up to the 49-yard line and tackled in there by number 81, Chuck Castleton. The offense for this fine uh, Thornton team will go like this. They will have as their quarterback Dave Robertson. He wears number 29. The fullback is Bob Giroux. The tailback is John Susi as the first play from scrimmage, first down. Robinson, the quarterback, hands off to Giroux. Giroux with a little running room. And he gets up to the one-yard line, or one-yard gain to about the 48-yard line. The tackle was by the middle of the line. He Bob Giroux will be one of the uh, principal weapons of the Thorn Academy Trojans. Giroux has scampered for some 652 yards on the season. And uh, Robinson brings his uh, ball club up from the South Portland 48. He's fading back to pass. He fires one and it's picked off very nicely in there by South Portland. And that, uh, check that number, number 81 for the South Portland team. And that will be uh, Chuck Casaldon. And he picks it off and gets back to the 45 yard line. Picks it off at the 45 and moves it down to the 47. And the intended receiver, which was John Gus, makes the tackle to save a touchdown. So quickly, South Portland changes the situation around and a pickoff that time by Castleton. And South Portland will be on the offense there for a time. These two teams met on the season and Thornton Academy came away the victor by a score of 22-7. From the Thornton 47-yard line, the quarterback is Joe Cloutier. And he hands off to Kane number 44 and Kane with some pretty good running room gets about three yards and the tackle that time was by big number 86 and that is uh, Eric Mora. Kane and Millington will do the bulk of the ball carrying for South Portland especially in Millington. Again he had uh, well over 200 yards some 225 yards and one game uh, last week, season finale. Millington handles the ball right now as he tracks over the right side. They started at the 44. He gained about two on that one. And the tackle in there by number 44, Jeff Mazur. So South Portland, improving team like the Bangor Rams, ended up with an identical record as Bangor, five and three. Now they had picked off a Robertson pass and are in business as they are in third down situation from the Thornton 42 yard line, including the quarterback. And an offside, you can see the South Portland player jump that time. Appeared to be Chris Dodge. And there'll be a penalty there. Two teams vying for the right to advance to the state final. The state final will be played at Bowdoin College next weekend. The winner of this game will play Bangor the Bangor Rams defeated Biddeford this afternoon by a score of 45 to seven. That was Bill Buck, 36 to jump off the side. So the dime will stay the same. South Portland still retains the ball. After that five yard penalty, Buck was offside. So they're on the 47. Millington now with a good running room. He crashes ahead like a steamroller and he moves the ball all the way down to the 33-yard line, and a very fine play. That time tackled by Chris Summer, number 12 of this very fine Thornton team. Billington, a big, powerful running back, stands uh, six feet tall. Scott Billington, six feet, 100, uh, weighs in at 182, has rushed uh, for close to 1,000 yards 
uh, during his senior year. Nine, he's listed at 9.15 coming into today's game. So first down, Millington again as he hammers up over and uh, down to about the 28-yard line as he gets over the 30. That time he was tackled by 44, Jeff Missouri. So Millington doing most of the carrying here in this particular series of plays with the South Portland team. So in the academy, of course, the winner of the, the Bowie division uh, coming in first, trailed by Biddeford and Sanford, and South Portland, the winner of the current division, which includes a lot of Portland area teams with their record of five and three. Kane with a large hole, blasts his way down with good running room. He was brought down by a host of players, Summers being one of them, and getting up also is Jeff Lewis, and also give credit there to the captain, uh, Craig Tebow, to bring down very fine ball uh, carrier, Mr. Kane, and uh, another first down for the South Portland team as they get down now to the Thornton 17-yard line, and they're on the attack again. Quarterback is Cloutier calling the play now. He's going to turn, hand off to Millington. Millington goes from right to left and uh, is hit there by number 38, Bissonette. Rick Bissonette, but not until he gained three yards. Millington gets a good hit of steam up and then flies right toward the middle of that line. Again, South Portland finishing on the top of the current division ahead of Portland. South Portland five and three, Portland three and five. And then came Chevers at four and four, Deering one and seven, and Westbrook 0 oh and eight. So second down situation. Playing it pretty much on the ground. The handoff is to the fullback. This would be Kane as he drives straight ahead. And this time he's tackled by number 56, Dennis Nason. And uh, give him a couple yards on that. So this very fine South Poland team who came to play here at uh, Saco Main with their quarterback is uh, Joe Cloutier. He wears number 14, the fullback Mike Keane, and the tailback is Scott Millington. Cloutier calling signals from the 13. Now he hands to Millington. Millington crashes over the 10 down to about the nine yard line. And there's uh, six minutes and 20 seconds left here in the first quarter of action. No score and the tackle again by number 56 is Dennis Nason. Cloutier will get that ground game going by handing off to Millington. Millington will pick up valuable yardage and then Cloutier is known to go to the air and went off to uh, Mike St. John, one of his primary receivers, one of his favorite receivers. So we'll see both quarterbacks uh, going to the air this afternoon, no doubt. Timeout uh, momentarily. As we mentioned, six minutes, 20 seconds as one of the coaches races out on the field. Maybe he's getting ready for the marathon. Take a look at the offensive line for this South Portland team. And uh, they go like this from left to right. Shane Barilli will be a tackle. On the left side, left guard 62 is Andy Burns. The center is Mike Hunter. Guard, right guard 66 is Ken Frank. The tackle on the right side, number 70, Mike Ingram. And 88 is the end, Mike Vance. The halfback is Bill Buck. Quarterback number 14 is Joe Cloutier. Fullback is Mike Kane, and the tailback is 34, Scott Millington. Kane wears 44. Kane and Millington doing most of the carrying as they are down at the Thornton nine-yard line with fourth down. The pitch goes off to Millington. Millington turns. He's hammered, and it does not appear that he made the first down as he was stopped in there by the left side of that uh, very fine Thornton line. And the Ford Academy defense is fired up uh, by that play, stopping Milliton at Millington in a key situation, Thornton taking it back. So Sear was the uh, player that got in there to stop Mr. Millington, and uh, Thornton takes over at their own 10-yard line. Thornton Academy, uh, as we mentioned, has an outstanding receiver in John Gass, a favorite target of Dave Robinson, a senior quarterback who's just an outstanding quarterback. And off the second man, this would be Susie, number 34. And he's driven by by the South Portland line. Susie he did, however, get four yards. Susie and Giroux, we expect to see doing most of the running for the Thornton Academy Trojans. Giroux has, again,
weekend. 652 yards rushing on the season coming into this playoff game. Last week, Gus was on the receiving end of three touchdown passes from Robinson as Thornton rolled up a very impressive 45-20 to 20 win over arch-rival Biddeford in a game played on Biddeford's Waterhouse Field. From the 14-yard line, Thornton, the handoff to the second man through, that'll be Susie again. And Susie puts his head down and bores straight ahead. Again, the middle of that South Portland line stops him. So he'll mark, mark the ball to about the 17. So it'll be third down at the Thornton 17 coming up. In that game last week, that final game of the season for Thornton Academy, uh, it was uh, the big one between Thornton and Biddeford. Both teams had gone into the game undefeated with 7-0 records. Uh, Thornton still is undefeated at this point. Biddeford lost its first game last week. Robinson hit on 7 of 10 pass attempts for 163 yards. And an estimated 8,500 fans watched that game show. And in the middle is uh, number 31, Giroux. And He's not going that far, although uh, he does pick up three, but again, right in the middle uh, is that South Portland line. He does get the first down. So hammering ahead is uh, Mr. Giroux, Bob Giroux, as both teams are very much content to stay on the ground to try to establish some running uh, precedence here in this first quarter with no score. The South Portland team had an excellent uh, drive but they got down to the nine yard line and then the stop by the Thornton line negated uh, anything possible and they did not get their first down hand off second man again Susie and you can see him was right into that line and then is corralled down not much running room there but a guy a key uh, blocker to keep an eye on uh, number 77 is offensive tackle uh, Craig Tebow of Thornton Academy in fact the Biddeford coach Mike Landry called Tebow uh, the MVP in the game last week between Thornton and Biddeford, his blocking was a big, big factor in that game. Uh, Tebow is 6'1", 200-pounder, and we'll see him lead the way on many rushing attacks. Rod uh, Kirstead was the tackler that time. As Susie gained one yard, they're at their own 21-yard line. Robinson calling uh, signals, turns, hands off the first man, Susie. He spins and goes off to the left side. And he probably got a couple that time. There's 250 left here in first quarter action. No score in the second part of our doubleheader. The Bangor Rams winning very handily this afternoon, 45 to 7 over to Biddeford. And they will play the winner of this Thornton South Portland game. At this point, nothing, nothing is a score. Robinson, as a quarterback, is very good at disguising the handoff as well. He uh, is very heads-up quarterback, one of the best probably in Class A football this year. So Robinson has not put the ball in the air as yet. Not yet. But, uh, just, uh, we'll see what he does do. He has to roll back, fakes a handoff, now looks down, and fires out to the side, and it's off the fingertips of Redmond, Thayer Redmond, and so the pass goes incomplete. Robinson down coming up. Robinson has thrown the ball for some... 971 yards on the season. He's hit uh, on 58 of 93 attempts during this season. So at the fourth down situation coming up, the Thornton Academy team will have to punt, and John Gus is back to punt. See if he can get his foot into this one. As a snap is a good one. The ball is put down and hammered. It's going to go up, take a bounce at the 50-yard line down toward the 40 as the South Portland players do not want to run it back. So it'll go all the way down to the 40-yard line. And from the 40, from the other end, the 23, that was a 47-yard kick. And first down will start at the South Portland 40-yard line. This uh, South Portland team played Bangor in the season and lost 14 to seven at uh, Cameron Field. But this certainly is a different ball club than we saw that day, as well as the different ball club that we saw in the Bangor Rams. Handoff will go to the second man through. That will be Millington. And from the first down from the 40, Millington carries about three. And the tackle in there, Keith, was by number 56, Dennis Nason. In that Bangor South Portland game, I think it was the first game uh, that really, when Bangor began to uh, began to roll, and they steadily improved from 
from that point on, winning five and three in South Portland, of course, has also gone five and three and, and uh, has run off a string of, of victories, including one last week over Portland to end up the season. From the 43, Claudia rolls down. He's going to pass. He's got a man, uh, St. John. St. John with good running room. And he gets all the way down the 41 yard line. And he was tackled and brought out of bounds that time by number 38, Rick Bissonette. So Cloutier also shows that he can put the ball in the air when he when he wants to, going to St. John. Cloutier, Joe Cloutier, is a, is a junior. He'll be back next year for South Portland. 5'11", junior, standing, uh, weighing 170. Listed as a quarterback and a uh, safety on defense. Now from the Thornton 41-yard line is South Portland team on a drive again. Pretty much staying on the ground with the exception of that pass there. Second man through the tailback Millington and uh, hanging on for dear life with Sear, number 25, Jeff Sear, but not until the very strong Millington picked up uh, three yards on that play. Gets down to the 38 now of Thornton. Being the heart of that uh, offense, you can pretty much count on Millington coming straight at you every second or third play, I think. So the... Uh, Thornton Academy defense stiffens on that one and doesn't allow much much yardage by Millington. Second down coming up from the Thornton 38 yard line. Cloutier back again. He's going to pass. He throws down the middle and it's uh, re recepted in there and finally knocked out of bounds. We'll check that out. That was number 20 again. Mike St. John St. John again. So John St. John makes a, a nice uh, run. After the reception, he gets all the way down to the 11 yard line of Thornton. And that's a uh, 27 yard pass play. And holding on and making the tackle was number 80, Dan Gamash. Mike St. John, a, a junior as well, 5'9, 157 pounds. So the nucleus of a, a good team coming back for the Red Riots. From the 11 yard line, handoff goes the man in the middle. This is Kane. And he hammers his way up over. Kane got good blocking that time and made the best of it going straight through following a blocker. And Jeff Lewis was the man to make the tackle. And that ends the first quarter of play, Keith. No score. Well, fast moving first quarter. Both teams kind of feeling each other out, I think. Uh, Joe pushing each other up and down the field. Uh, just good, solid, grinded out, fundamentally sound football. Go to the uh, air occasionally, but get the ground game uh, established. And both quarterbacks have shown they can uh, put the ball in the air. And I expect we will see a lot of passing before the game is over. But so far, no score. And we're looking at, I believe, two pretty evenly matched uh, football teams. So they'll have to go to the other end of the field. And we'll mark the ball at the three-yard line with no score in this uh, first quarter of play. Rain still continues to come down. Good crowd on both sides come here to watch uh, these two semifinal teams in Class A. There are only 11 uh, teams, and Keith, as you were saying about the uh, maybe possible uh, realignment, uh, for next year. Well, the State Principals Association will take that up at uh, a meeting right away, I believe, uh, on the 10th, uh, Monday. They're talking about reclassifying Class A, bringing a lot of uh, Class B teams up into uh, Class A. As you know, right now, there are three divisions. They're talking about making four. And Millington hammers his way through for the first score of the game from the three-yard line as they ran from the power eye that time at the 11.55 uh, mark. Here in start the second period, the South Portland Red Riots are on the board and draw first blood here and make the score six to nothing. So it was bound to happen. It was only a matter of time before the big guy would take it in for South Portland. And uh, holding will be number 14. This will be Colin Robinson. And the kicker will be number 36. That will be Bill Buck. So South Portland leading, the ball snapped down. It's a chink Whoops. shot and goes to the left, and it's no good. So after the first score, it still stands 6 to nothing as the extra point is missed. Again, the reclassification plan will bring a bunch of, or a reclassification being proposed. It, it may or may not be adopted. It'll be discussed allegedly uh, November 10th 
at a meeting of the Maine State Secondary Principals Association. And the Northwest, the Northeast would have Bangor, Brewer, Lawrence, Galhegan, Waterville, and Winslow competing. Bangor is the only team uh, currently in Class A. The Northwest would have Chevers, Deering, Edward, Little, Lewiston, South Portland, and Portland. And those are all Class A schools. They'd be in the Northwest, believe it or not, in spite of the fact they're pretty far south. The Southeast would include Brunswick, Coney, Gardner, Morris, Mount Blue, and Oxford Hills. And the Southwest would be Biddeford, Massabesic, Noble, Sanford, Thorn Academy, and Westbrook. And in that uh, division, Westbrook, Sanford, Thorn Academy, and Biddeford are, are currently Class A teams in the Southeast. None of the teams proposed for the Southeast Conference are currently Class A teams. Runs with Coney, Gardner, Morris, Mount Blue, and Oxford Hills are all uh, smaller schools. Anderson's kick is a low squibber, and this goes to number 25 for the Fountain team, Jeff Sear, and he brings it back to the Fountain 41 yard line. He picked it up at the 29 and races it back up to the 41, so first down for Fountain, trailing by a score of six to nothing at their own 41 yard line. Currently, most of these Class A teams are sort of clustered in an area from Lewiston South to, uh, to Biddeford, the Biddeford uh, and Saco Sanford area, with a number of them, uh, five right in the Portland uh, Portland area, Bangor being the only team in Eastern Maine in, the cl in Class A. In Robinson keeps himself. He starts around the corner and is finally brought down from behind, tackled in there by number 44. That would be Mike Kane. But uh, not till he got uh, eight yards up to the 49 yard line. Robinson very skillful at running the option and disguising the handoff and throwing the pass. Just a very skillful young high school quarterback. Uh, this is his senior year, but he's a, he's a good leader for Thornton Academy and he is uh, a big reason, a key factor why they are in this playoff. Robinson, the quarterback, hands off to the first man. That would have been. Uh, Number 31 on the play, uh, Bob Giroux, but Bob Giroux was thrown back and tackled that time by number 77, Jim Anderson, who is the punter, so they lose a yard on that one. They go back to the 48-yard line. Third down coming up. As Robinson comes back into the huddle now to tell his players what play is going to take place in this down, the third down as they lost a, down, a, a yard and they're back at the 48. Backing out signals now, turns, hands off to Susie and Susie's hammered and Susie may have lost a yard as well. So the South Portland line stiffening up pretty good and this will bring fourth down situation up for this uh, Fountain Academy team and uh, they'll be forced to punt from their own 47 yard line. Robinson so adept at disguising his handoff uh, wasn't able to disguise that one pretty well read there by South Portland. As Goss will do the punting from the Thornton it's kind of high but he'll get it off and he bangs a beauty it's going down the middle to Millington Millington stops turns hemmed in still going as he looked like he went down but he helped himself with his hand and uh, he goes up to his own 21-yard line. That was a 41-yard kick. So the South Portland team will find themselves at the 26-yard line. Tell us that Scott Millington does a lot of things for the South Portland squad. Squad running back uh, the kickoffs. The tailback is, as we've mentioned, one of the best in the state this year, racking up close to a thousand yards on the ground. Millington gained five yards when he caught that punt. Now he's going to handle again, going right up to the middle like the steamroller from the 26, and gains up to about the 32. This time he's tackled by number 40, Jeff Lewis. Lewis brings him down. But you can see he's tall, he's big, he's strong. In the program, he goes at six foot, 182. He looks bigger than that. He does, and he's racked up 11 touchdowns on the season. 915 yards, as we mentioned, coming into this playoff game. Imagine this, he had 245 yards and 20 carries last week. So this time, uh, the carry is by Keane. 
And Kane uh, got a couple of that. Gary Labby in on the tackle. And that'll bring up a third down. And they'll mack the ball at the South Pole in 34. Six to nothing the score here in the second quarter of action. Joe Cludia, the quarterback for the South Portland Red Riots, backing out the signals now. He turns, hand off to Millington. Millington right straight ahead with the blocking. And he gains about four that time, and he's tackled in there by number 63. That would be Gary Labby. Nothing very fancy. They continue to go with what's working. Millington straight up the middle. Both teams seem to be uh, fundamentally sound, grinded out uh, teams that depend quite heavily on the ground game and solid running from uh, guys like Millington. And, you know, obviously we'll get the ground game established and maybe try to go to the air. South Portland with a first down, working from their own 38-yard line. The pitch goes to Millington. Millington turns, and he goes down. He lost about a yard on that uh, play. The tackle that time was by number 66, Jim Fournier, and also credit number 25, Jeff Sear, for the tackle bringing down Millington. Almost like going to the well maybe once too often there with Millington on that series of downs. So they go move back one yard to the 37. And this will be second down coming up. Moving to the outside is Bill Buck. As Cloutier gets ready, hands off to Millington. Millington starts. He gets up to the 40-yard line or falls forward to the 40. And there's going to be a penalty on this uh, on this play. See what it's going to be. It appears to be a uh, legal procedure. So that will be a five-yard penalty if uh, Thornton decides to take it. Again, these two teams met on the season. It was Thornton Academy winning that one, 20 to 7 over South Portland. But I'm sure that uh, South Portland has improved since that time, and probably so has Thornton Academy. But so far, they look pretty evenly matched out there, pushing each other up and down the field with South Portland out front right now. So the ball is still at the 39-yard 30 yard line, so evidently the uh, Trojans declined that penalty for whatever reason. And uh, third down and nine now. And again, the pitch goes to Millington. Millington goes into crowd, and he's smothered in there by a host of Trojans that knock him down. And that third down now will bring up the fourth down punting situation. The way you have to tackle Millington is gang tackling. He'll shake a couple guys off until a group gets around it. He did get up to the 41-yard line, but they'll have to be forced to punt now. Call it about the 41 and a half. Millington also does the punting. Snaps a good one. Puts the ball up in the air. And a fair catch by, by number 80 that time for the Thornton team. That was uh, Dean Gamash. And Gamash doesn't want to try to traipse through all the South Portland teams, so he calls for a fair catch. And Thornton will be starting first down on their own 41-yard line with 547 remaining here in second period of action. The South Portland offense was down, uh, the defense or rather was down in a hurry uh, following that punt. Robinson calling signals from his own 41-yard line. Fakes, now he starts to go to the outside, carries himself. But uh, getting up off the backside is uh, Mike Ingram, who made a nice tackle. And that's going to be a loss of three yards. So the South Portland score seems to have fired up the offense as well as that often is the case the offense will come up and make a, a big play and, and put points on the board and then the defense will will uh, get some of that same enthusiasm and and come through in fine style from the Thornton Academy 38 this is second down Robinson now will put it in the air he fires and ooh it's incomplete that was intended for Tarbox Mike Tarbox could not come up with it looked like the pass was right there but Mike just couldn't handle 
and it goes in an incomplete pass, so we'll come back to the 38 yard line again. This time it'll be third down. The other uh, very important receiver, Keith, is number 41, John Gus. And we saw John catch a, catch a couple of beauties at uh, Biddeford last week. Well, in fact, Gus was on the receiving end of three touchdown passes from Robinson as Thornton rolled up a very impressive 45 to 20 win over uh, Biddeford in the final game of the season. Robinson right back. He's going to act one out. It's intended for Gus, and he, Ooh. oh, almost had it, but it goes off his hands and out of bounds, and that was almost a spectacular completion. Gus has great hands. We saw him haul in some real beauties last week. And he is, again, as we mentioned, a favorite target of Robinson, who can really put the ball in the air, and Gus can really uh, gather it in on occasion. So a fourth down coming up at the Thornton 38. They'll be forced to punt. John Gus is the punter. Gus will get ready. Gus is one of the super athletes that does a lot of things for the team, uh, a lot like Millington of South Florida. And the putt going down the field, and that's going to be Millington, his uh, counterpart, as he starts up, and he is hammered and brought down nicely that time by number 25. And that is Jeff Sear again. So Sear puts the stop to Millington with 450 remaining here in the uh, second quarter of action. Score is still six to nothing in favor of South Portland. As South Portland now will have first down on their own 28 yard line. Again, the winner of this game will move on to the state final to play the Bangor Rams, and that'll be played at the game will be played at Bowdoin College next weekend, and it'll be carried here on MPBN television. Millington fumbles the ball, and coming up with it is Thornton Academy, and we'll try to get that uh, number coming up with it. Number 38 for Thornton Academy is Rick Bissonette, and Bissonette recovers, so this is a big break for the Thornton team as they have not put anything on the scoreboard yet, but now they're down at the South Portland 28-yard line. And a recovery that time as Millington just lost the handle. And Thornton working from the South Portland 28-yard line. Robinson the, Robinson, the quarterback, hands off to the first man through. This will be Giroux, and Giroux was tackled in there by number 44, Mike Kane. It could have been a key turnover. Obviously, it's going to be very hard to keep this powerful Thorn Academy team off the scoreboard. They're the winningest team in Class A football this year. And they're putting an 8-0 and record on the line in this playoff game. And one of the most uh, potent offenses demonstrated around the state this year as well. Again, winning the uh, final game of the season, 45-20 to over uh, Biddeford. The Biddeford Tigers, who went 7-1 and on the season, were defeated this afternoon by the Bangor Rams. So from the South Portland 26, quarterback is Robinson. Robinson fakes now, looks down, he fires out to the left side, and the reception is made. There's his favorite target, that's Gus. Gus, and he gets down to the 15-yard line, and that time a double tackle was by number 34, Scott Millington, and 20 helping to cap it off was Mike St. John, but not until the Fountain Academy team got down to the South Portland 15-yard line. That's the kind of teaming up they've been doing all season. Robinson and Gus. So we'll see if they try another pass here or maybe stick to their running game. Robinson calling from the 15-yard line. The pass goes out. The pitch goes out to Susie. Susie on the left side, and he gets knocked out of bounds. And he may have gained uh, two or three on that one. Is tackled by Millington. Millington forced him out of bounds. Robinson will do a lot of things well as quarterback, leading the team. You'll see him pitch out, run the option, go to the pass, draw play, play action pass, a number of things. A very versatile uh, quarterback, a very mobile quarterback, a uh, good runner himself. So the ball is marked at the 12-yard line of South Portland. Robinson calling signals for Thornton Academy, turns, hands off the first man, bounces. This is Giroux, and Giroux was finally tackled and brought down, but not until he gained a couple. That time he was tackled by number five, Rod Kirstead. Giroux has been the leading rusher for Thornton Academy all season. His total coming into today's ballgame, 652. 652 yards. 
and he's been the a leader. The, the Trojans have many reasons why they're a playoff team. Many weapons. Robinson now fakes, rolls out, looks down, he throws way down, and the tended receiver, uh, number 22, flipped and went down. That was Thayer Redmond. And going after the ball and letting it go out of bounds was Rod Kirstead. And you wonder why maybe Kirstead didn't pick that one off and bring the ball back to the 20. And the Thornton team now wants timeout here with uh, 234 left in the second quarter action. Hard to see from this angle whether he had a play on that ball, whether he could have caught that pass or not. It looked like he might have been able to pick it up himself, but it might have been, uh, you know, a few feet away. That was a bad angle, wasn't it? As a Thornton coach there talking over the uh, situation to his team. The South Portland team, as we mentioned, five and three on the season. They uh, started out with a win over Deering, 39 to nothing. Then lost to Lewiston, 14 to seven. Beat Edward Little, 28 to 12. And then played Thornton and lost to Thornton by a score of 20 to seven and played Bangor the following week, lost to Bangor 14 to seven, and then uh, beat Westbrook 42 to nothing, shut out Chevrolet 13 to nothing, and beat Portland 27 to nothing. So their last three games were shutouts as they went on to a five and three record and winning the current division. 2.31 to go in the half. Uh, you get the feeling still these two teams are feeling each other, other out. One wants to find the key to exploiting the other, but it hasn't really happened yet. Robinson fades back, looking now. He's going to fire down the middle, and is caught in there by number 86, Mike Tarbox, and he scores. So Thornton Academy on the board as they put one up at the 228 mark to tie this game 6-6. And their extra point kicker is number 52, Mike uh, Paul Tate. So we'll see if they will go for the single from the three-yard line. And Thornton uh, capitalizing on that Millington fumble has now capped off a 10-yard pass. Pass is high, but the kick is good. And it goes as seven to six. Kicking it through the upright was Paul Tate. And seven to six is the score, Keith, with 228 left here in first half action. As you look at a good crowd on hand at Hill Stadium on a rainy uh, afternoon in Saco, the Trojans answer the touchdown of Scott Millington early in the second period. Millington put one on the board for South Portland. Buck missed the extra kick, however. It was six to nothing. And now Thorn Academy has answered with a touchdown pass from Robinson to Mike Tarbox. Captain Mike Tarbox, number 86. The extra point was good. Thornton leads seven nothing. Seven six. And towing the ball up or teeing the ball up. At the 40 yard line is Paul Tate as he get ready to kick to the deep man, which will be uh, Scott Millington. The all purpose back the approach and the left foot kick is a scriver. It bounces off and uh, diving on the ball was number 80 for South Portland, Jeff Krangle. And Krangle did the, probably the best uh, thing he could do is pounce on that ball and keep it from scrubbing out. So a, South Portland will be working from their own 34-yard line. That's a thing for Krangle to do, no doubt, just falling on the ball instead of trying to pick it up and run with it, especially when the ball is so wet as you see out there. It's a wet field, and they keep wiping the ball off. Quarterback is Cludia for this South Portland team. Hands off to the first man. The fullback, this is Kane, and Kane may have got two or three up to about the 37-yard line, so second down from if they mark it to the 30s at the 37. Again, uh, very hard to penetrate the middle of this uh, Thornton line as their defenders going up front, Jeff Sear, Dennis Nason, Gary Labby, and Jim Fournier from left to right. Cludia now working from his own 37. Hand off again to Kane in the middle. Kane spins, turns, and uh, he picks up about a yard. 
Getting up uh, from the bottom of the pile was Bob Giroux, 31. New football being thrown in the game as it continues to rain here. Bissonette also in on the tackle. It seems though as, as if each team is trying to find the key to exploiting the other and neither one is really willing to open up at this point or show too many options. Uh, it's just run, run, then pass occasionally. Nothing fancy, just good, solid, fundamental football, and we find uh, them locked in a real duel at this point, 7-6. Third down, Millington, Millington to the left. Millington turns, trying to get to the 40 yard line. He gets over the 40 and wrestled down by Gus. So Millington carries a good carry that time, and hanging also uh, on his back was Jeff Meserve, and Millington over the 40, up to, will mark it to the 44 yard line. And that uh, they've got a fourth down now. And they'll have to punt. And the kick by Millington is high and deep. And this will not be fielded as it takes a Thornton bounce. And finally, a 30-yard kick goes all the way down to the Thornton 26-yard line. So as the time continues to tick down, the Thornton Academy team leading by a score of 7-6 to six here at halftime before halftime and both teams have played very very well in this uh, semifinal class A football game and as Keith had mentioned several times that uh, we may not see this uh, class A with 11 teams as it is this year that may change with a realignment next year this could be the last play of the first half and moving up with the ball is uh, Thirty-one, uh, Bob Giroux carrying the ball, and that's going to end Keith the first half of action. So the score goes: Thornton Academy seven, and South Portland six. And we'll come right back to Hill Stadium after this. On the next Wonder Works, when a family moves into an old mansion, they find mystery, adventure, and danger. Yes, for that family there, I'm going to make them sorry they ever set foot in the house of dies, Via. Moses Gunn, Gloria Foster, and Howard E. Rollins, Jr. star in the house of dies, Drea on the next Wonder Works. Sunday evening at 7 on MPBN-TV. This week on Paradise Postponed. She and Henry have got married. Somewhere in America. You are so self-indulgent. Me? Enjoying the luxury of feeling desperate in a Hollywood hotel. Paradise Postponed on Masterpiece Theater. It's the most flagrant immorality. Sunday evening at 9. This is the Maine Public Broadcasting Network, a service of the University of Maine system. Okay, back at Hill Stadium in Saco, the site of this Class A football playoff game between the Thornton Academy Trojans and the South Portland Red Riots. Uh, a real duel throughout the first half. We saw teams push each other up and down the field with South Portland getting on, this, on the board first with big uh, Millington, Scott Millington, taking it in early in the second period, uh, but Buck missing the extra point, so South Portland went up six to nothing, and then shortly before the half ended, Thornton Academy came back to score, a TD pass, uh, Robinson to Mike Tarbox, the captain, and the extra point was good, putting the Thornton Academy Trojans up by one point at halftime, seven to six again. These teams met on the season, and it was Thornton Academy beating uh, South Portland by a score of uh, 20 to 7. And uh, again, we're seeing the winningest team in Class A football this year putting its 8 0 record on the line and the attempt to move ahead to the state final next week. That'll be played at Bowdoin College, and the winner of this game will play, play Bangor High School. Bangor defeated Bedford this afternoon by a score of 45 to 7. And 
unusually unexpected and an unexpected lopsided score with Bangor uh, the bombing Biddeford. The Thorn Academy Trojans are the only undefeated team in Class A this season. Will have to be, I guess, established as the favorite here in this game, although they're in a real fight right now, locked in a real duel with South Portland. A very impressive, uh, fundamentally sound South Portland uh, team that came to play this afternoon. And, and Scott Millington is really an outstanding athlete and one of the finest running backs around this season. He's uh, piled up 915 yards on the season. Last week alone, 245 yards on 20 carries in their final game of the season as they beat Portland 27 to nothing. So we're just about set for the kickoff to begin the second half of this high school playoff game and here's Joe Gould and getting ready to kick the ball will be number 52 Paul Tate he approaches it's a ground ball going the middle and turning and getting hemmed in and knocked down the South Portland uh, carrier that uh, was number 26 Fred Alexander and Alexander gets up from the bottom of the pile and took the ball from the 32 up to the South Portland 38. So they'll be working from their own 38 yard line. Very conservatively played ball game this far, Joe. Nobody really taking any big risks or chances. Uh, Millington starts to go, puts his head down, but he's met in there by number 56, and that would be uh, uh, Dennis Nason. And 62 also put the the cap on uh, 63 we should say Gary Labby South Portland contempt to keep going back to the well with Millington trying to push it straight at Thornton Academy having a limited amount of success doing that of course Millington scored early in the game uh, but Thornton Academy seems to have a greater variety of, of plays in their offensive uh, menu So back to pass, and the pass comes out to the side and recepted in there by number 20 for the South Portland team. That would be Mike St. John. And a nice connection that time from Cloutier to St. John. That moves the ball up to the 46-yard line of South Portland. Young Cloutier hitting one of his favorite targets on the season, Mike St. John. Again, Cloutier only a junior. He'll be seeing action for the South Portland Red Riots again in 1987. As St. John is still in the game, along uh, comes the quarterback now, Cloutier. And they'll get ready now to try a third down play. And they're at their own 46-yard line. Cloutier fakes, now goes back. He looks, he's going to pass again, still looks. Gets it out to St. John. St. John is tackled. Nice play that time. Tackled by number 38 for this fun academy team that would be uh, Rick Bissonette nice pass but Bissonette was right there waiting to make the nice sound tackle so now we'll see where they place the ball fourth down will be coming up this will be a real close uh, measurement here See if it gets by the head of the uh, football. It's going to be out and shot. That shot. Two and five tenths <laughs> <laughs> millimeters or whatever. They switch balls. Rain still continues to come down. That so field must. That, that field is in pretty amazing condition, though. I mean, that field is is not really churned up and it's not muddy like some football fields get on a rainy afternoon. I mean, it's still uh, a green. Uh, real fine lawn effect out there. It almost looks like AstroTurf it in some spots. So well, well kept look at the field. fun Academy team move up this time. They want to prevent, but Kane goes ahead. He's going to get the first down as he got up to the mid stripe 50 yard line. But uh, looked like 11 players came up with Thornton to try to prevent that, but they could not as Kane get the first down. Well, that's the thing South Portland does best is go right to the middle with their big, uh, their big backs, go straight ahead. Keep grinding it out and hope for people like Millington to uh, put scores on the board. 
So first down from the 50 yard line as you can see the ball squarely on the 50 yard line. Clodia the quarterback. He's going to turn. He's going to pass again. He's looking down. Axel high and long and Duke is going down. It's received in there again by number 20 for the South Portland team. Mike St. John. Beautiful pass. And St. John has come up with a gem. And that moves the ball all the way down. We'll see where they mark this. It's down in Thornton territory, and they're going to mark this at the 28-yard line. Again, Mike St. John, one of Cloutier's favorite targets for the South Portland Red Riots. Tackle was by Jeff Lewis. St. John is a junior, standing only 5'9", weighing 157. Cloutier himself uh, listed at 5'11". He's a junior, weighing 170. South Portland working from the Thornton 28-yard line. The handoff, the second man through. Millington, Millington still on his feet. Millington rolls away from the host of tacklers and gets some good yardage that time. He went from the 28, will knock it down to the 24-yard line. So second do down coming up from the 24. Well, they don't go to the pass. They don't go to the air that often, but uh, they've done it with success. And if they can get that ground game going with, with Millington, they're continuing that ground game with Millington there liable to be able to go to the air to St. John uh, more and more often so maybe they'll try to uh, exploit that Thorn Academy secondary for as the game goes on. Clear calling signals turns goes back looks down he's going to throw long and it's caught in there a beautiful reception wow. that time by number 80 and that was Jeff Krangle and Krangle takes the ball all the way down to the Thornton three yard line with 839 left here in third quarter action. Beautiful pass. So after playing very conservative ball, uh, South Portland is beginning to open it up and put the ball in the air. Good down by Joe Cloutier. There's another Joe Cloutier, but he lives in uh, Rockland, Maine. I guess they wanted to let Thorn Academy get a look at uh, Millington for a couple of couple of quarters, and then the keying on the run, thinking about the run, and then go to the air. There's a handoff to Millington. Millington left side. He fumbled the ball. And that's going to be picked up in there by number 77 for this uh, Thon Academy team. Craig Tebow, the captain, and he takes over the fumble at the six-yard line. And Thon Academy as hell as Millington comes back to the huddle. A little bit upset about that, but a good hat hit that time. And the... Recovery on the fumble was by number 77, Tebow, one wow. of the captains. A key break for Thornton Academy that time, just as South Portland was about to put more poor, more points on the board. So they're working from their own six-yard line. Quarterback Robinson, first man through, is Giroux, and Giroux springs out and over for some yardage to the 13, gain about seven on that play. Second down coming up. Well, some key, uh, if they had to get in on that one, uh, there would have been 12 and a possible two-pointer coming up for a single. That could turn out to be a big key turnover in this ball game, the way it's been going. I mean, John Gus split way to the right side. Quarterback is Robinson, working from his own 13-yard line. Work from the I formation, first man through is Giroux again. And Giroux is tackled in there by number 44. That would be Mike Keane. But uh, he gets about three or four on that. We'll mark it. See where they mark the ball. We're going to mark it at the 17-yard line. In a tight, low-scoring ball game like this, uh, any points at all are key points. And when you're about to go in like that with a big runner like Millington and, and turn the ball over, it may come back to haunt you. Thornton comes up at their 17-yard line. Quarterback Robinson hands off the second man, Susie, and Susie is hit back and tackled by Anderson this time. He may have lost about one. So they did make the first down, and now this will be second down coming up, and we'll put the ball back a yard to the 16. Tackle that time by Jim Anderson, as mentioned, and they bring the ball back to the 16-yard line. So it rained at both sites in uh, Bangor and here in Saco. Robinson calling out the signals. He turns. He's going to take himself. He 
Turns it up the middle and stops in good running room that time. As Robinson himself takes the ball from the 16-yard line for a up to the mark at the 26-yard line. Tackle that time, Keith, by number 20, Mike St. John, and by number 34, Scott Millington. These teams really are matched up or seem to be matched up so well, and they even employ similar styles, and they're locked in a real fight with only two touchdowns scored. So from the 26th, third down, Robinson calling signals off to Giroux. Giroux smashes straight ahead and appears that he has a first down. As they do get the first down and the chain gang will move. And now we work from the Thornton 28 yard line. So wet out there with that steady rain, they keep changing the changing the football. And both teams intend to play a pretty conservative style of football this afternoon. Robinson ever dangerous with uh, that option of his that he can keep the ball and run and he's an exceptionally fine runner this time again is handed off to Giroux Giroux right straight ahead and looking at that blocking up front oh. 75 is uh, Rene Manad and 77 is Craig Tebow they just pushed everybody right back as Giroux carried the ball from the 28 up to the 35 and tackled in there by Chuck Caselden. Getting some great blocking that time. Again, Mike uh, Landry, the Biddeford coach, called Craig Tebow the MVP in a game last week between Biddeford and Thornton. Uh, his blocking was a key factor in that game, in, in that game that Thornton won. There's Mr. Giroux again, and he just hammers straight ahead. And picks up another first down, and the tackle again was by Chuck Caselden. And a player of South Portland down. They'd like to run behind Craig T Tebow. He's an offensive tackle, 6'1", 200 pounds. And he has been a, a key weapon for Thornton Academy. So a first down again at the 4-3-3 mark here in the third quarter. Thornton Academy leading by a score of 7-6. to six. See it right there. Dr. Paul S. Hill Junior Stadium. As both coaches on the sidelines trips back and forth. As we mentioned, Robinson, a very fine runner when he gets the opportunity, takes the handoff. Whoa, he's going to go around himself. Cuts back in up the middle. And look at this, ladies and gentlemen, as he stats down the field. A fine run that time by the very fine quarterback, Dave Robinson. And he goes from uh, his own 35 down into South Portland territory, a gain of 26 yards, a 33 yard uh, down to the 33 yard line. Just one more example of the kind of talented quarterback Robinson is, uh, able to to fake the handoff and really scamper for necessary yardage. Did well to disguise that play. So they're down in South Poland territory with this timeout. And uh, the coach in there trying to get his charges going. And most of these players to South Poland are two-way people. So they're probably feeling the brunt of it too when they're looking for uh, the uh, Mr. Giroux slashing through or Susie behind him. They have to contend with a quarterback who is also a fine runner. And you really haven't seen uh, what he can do with the ball as far as passing with John Gus out, out there. That was the eighth play uh, of this drive, and the drive started on the sixth yard line. So both coaches are now in the huddle talking to their respective teams. Dick Agresti, the head coach of Thornton Academy, and John Wolfgram is the head man for the South Portland Red Riots. Formerly coached for many years by Jack Flynn, who is now the athletic director at South Portland High School. So from the South Portland 33, Giroux, the first man through, and he may have got a yard if that, and uh, tackled that time by Mike Hunter. 
So the hunter was in on the hunt that time to bring down Mr. Giroux. Going to Kennedy, really sustaining a nice drive here. As we mentioned, it began on the uh, six-yard line. Robinson is leading his charges toward the goal line. From the South Pole in 32, second down. Hand off to Susie, the second man through. He gets good running room, and he bolts his way all the way down on a 10-yard run to the 22-yard line. That time brought down by number 70. In on the tackle was Mike Ingram and number 50, which would be Mike Hunter. As you see a number of umbrellas and rain gear in the audience on a rainy Saturday afternoon, playoff Saturday, two playoffs in Class A football today. The Bangor Rams against the Biddeford Tigers. Bangor won to advance to the state final against the winner of this contest to be played at Bowdoin College and to be carried on MPBN TV. Robinson turns, hands off the first man. Giroux, Giroux just takes the, everybody with him as he stats down with good running room and brought down by Mike Ingram, but Ingram did not uh, catch up until he got down to the 15-yard line. So we'll see where the uh, official plants the ball, just about the 15, we'll call it. So the officials are getting together and they're pointing up at the clock, Keith, and uh, there must be something wrong with the scoreboard at this time. Maybe it's the time itself as the Thornton team breaks out, but they're going to be pushed back to their huddle as the officials start to converge and talk about this. The clock, uh, they are having trouble with the field clock. Apparently it's uh, a bit erratic and appears to be keeping accurate time without, uh, although the numbers are, are jumping around a bit and they're trying to figure out if it is accurate time and whether they should be depending on it, but they're talking it over now. Coach Agresti and the officials. Now it appears he's going to go over to the other sideline to talk to the South Portland coach. As the clock uh, appears to be the problem at this point. But they have an uh, official on the field that has his own clock as Agresti comes out to speak to one of the other officials. So Very low, low scoring game, I, I think a bit uh, surprising at this point. We've seen two touchdowns. They came in the first half. Uh, Scott Billington for South Portland went to the well first uh, early in the second period. But Buck missed the extra point. That put South Portland on the board first six to nothing. Thornton Academy answered with 238 left in the first half. A touchdown pass from Robinson to Mike Tarbox. The extra point was good. And here we are still locked in a very tight duel uh, with Thornton Academy ahead seven to six. And I guess they're going to agree uh, on something here. I guess we will trust the game clock. Um, as soon as it's, it, it, it is explained to both coaches. The fun team, when they do get underway here, will be at the South Portland 15 yard line. And a good drive. They will have second down. Probably the best drive of the game by, by either team. Robinson sustaining a drive that began back on the six yard line. And now we've got some more questions about the clock. And referee Dave Allen, the umpire is Bill Perino. Line judge is Bob White. The back judge, Jack Coyne. Other officials include Dick Laurent and Ed McDonough is the timer. The first man through the fullback is Giroux, and Giroux carries for a couple. So he gets down to about the... 13 yard line and that time the tackle was made by number 34 Scott Billington third down, and one. third down with one to go now and pretty much the brunt of the carrying has been between Giroux and Susie and the quarterback Mr. Robinson trying to get the first down fakes the handoff goes to the right side turns in 
And he may have got the first down. So Robinson mixing his plays up very well on this drive, continuing to sustain it as they close in on the score here. Waiting to bring the play in is number 22, Thea Redmond. And the ball is marked at the 10-yard line as Redmond brings the play in to Robinson. Dr. Paul Hill Stadium is a very nice football facility, one of the best in the state, and it's used often for state championship games in Class A, this Sanko football field. Robinson, the quarterback from the 10, fakes the handoff, turns himself. He's going to go with the ball, and he gets all the way down to about the two-yard line. And you have to give, give him uh, credit that time for eight yards as he spun off the left side, kind of protected the ball in the midriff, and then went off the left side all the way down to the two-yard line. So the last two carries have been Dave Robinson. And very impressive the way he's mixed up his plays on this long drive. So they are knocking at South Poland's door now. And uh, they are in second down situation with uh, goal to goal from the two. Robinson, the quarterback, calling the signals. He's going to go straight ahead. He bulls his way ahead. And he gets in there. And you've got to credit the uh, two linemen that time for pushing the way in. Scott Sakad, 71, and uh, Rene Mernad, 75. And on the board goes the Thornton Academy team again. And that makes the score 13 to 6 with 111 left here in the third quarter of action. Okay, a great drive that time sustained by Thornton Academy and in particular Robinson. They went 94 yards going 15 plays. It took 7 minutes and 29 seconds off the clock. And the kick is up and it's good. The score goes 14 for Thun Academy and 6 as putting it through the uprights was Paul Tate. 94 yards. Balloons, Keith. Balloons Grab one of those balloons. Come out from the Thornton Academy side. I can't reach out that far, Joe. <laughs> but the balloons coming out from the Thornton Academy Trojan fans. 94 yards on 15 plays. Again, they ran 7 minutes and 29 seconds off the clock and the way these two teams are playing. Those uh, very valuable points uh, at this point in this ball game in the third period with one eleven to go in the period. Uh, Robinson taking it in himself, outstanding quarterback. The extra point good, making it Thornton Academy 14 and South Portland 6. And South Portland will be, I mean, Thornton Academy will be kicking the ball away. And this one is, is very conservatively played and you know, I'm sure it'll go right to the wire. 111 left here in the third quarter of action. The winner of this game will play the Bangor Rams next week at uh, Bowdoin College, the campus in Brunswick, and MPBN will be there. As we always are with Class A football. And the crowd is not diminished by any means as we have a very fine football game as Mike Tate gets ready to kick the ball once again for this Paul Tate, I'm sorry. You see he changed the shoes. He's a left-footed kicker, as was Glenn Lebrecht, a left-footed punter today for Biddeford. The press box and the our cameras are on the Thornton side of the field, so across the way you're looking at a South Portland contingent and a big stadium. Hill Stadium and one of the finest facilities for football. Very nice, well kept field. As the ball is kicked to low trajectory, this time it goes to Crangle number 80, and he is hammered about five different times. He doesn't go down, but he got the ball back up to the 35, his own 35 yard line, and in there quickly to meet him was uh, Spirito. Spirito makes the tackle. That have been Paul. And they will start from their own 35-yard line, the South Portland Red Riots. Following the signals is Cloutier, the first man, the fullback. And he gets a little uh, no running room, that time hemmed in and hit by Greg Arnold of uh, this uh, 
Khan Academy team. So we'll see where they mark this ball, Keith. It may have been a loss of a yard. And it is. It's back to the South Portland 34. As they're trying to keep the ball dry. Now in motion is Millington. The pass. Oh, it's almost picked off, but Millington has it. And he goes out of bounds. But that time, we almost saw uh, Jeff Mazur pick off that pass. And it was nothing but green pastures ahead of Yadam. Uh, Jeff Mazur had a good idea. He knew what was coming off that time and read the play and tried to get to the ball and almost had himself an interception. But it goes the other way for a nine-yard gain. And it goes from the South Portland 34 to the 43. As that time, Millington caught the ball with the outstretched arms of Jeff Mazur. And if he had to pick that off, as we mentioned, he would have been able to turn into six and certainly turn this game around uh, a little bit more for the Staunton team, leading here 14 to six. Third down coming up. The handoff to Millington. Millington right straight ahead. And he slides over the 45 yard line. Gets to about the 46. It's a first down as we're nearing the end of the third period, Keith. As the clock continues to tick down. And I doubt very much that they'll get into the playoff. As the South Poland team is standing around and waiting now. 14 to 6 to score. The Thorn Academy Trojans leading. They are undefeated to this point. They were had a perfect mark on the season as we're waiting for a measurement to see if it is a first down. I call it a first down. We'll have to see. It's going to be it's going to be a stretch and it is. Oh, you could see that easy, couldn't you, Keith? Sure could. <laughs> South Portland can tend to play conservative football, like grinding it out, doing what they do best with Millington going straight out the middle quite often. Uh, not worrying yet. Of course, they're down 14 to 6. If they score a touchdown, they'll need a two-point conversion to tie it up. As the third period ends, they trail 14 to 6. But... Uh, Never fear, they're closing in and would like to sustain a drive of their own. And this one looks like it's going right to the wire. Two fundamentally sound, solid Class A football teams playing a fairly conservative style of football here at Paul Hill Stadium. So in between the quarters, the uh, Thornton Academy team, as we mentioned, Undefeated on the season, they started out with a shutout victory over Ever Little, 14 to nothing. They beat Portland, 37 to seven. They then uh, shut out Westbrook, 32 to nothing. One over South Portland, 20 to seven. In their fifth game, they beat Sanford, 34 to 13. And then they beat Lewiston in a shootout, 34 to 27. And then uh, shut out Thornton Academy, uh, excuse me, Deering, 35 to nothing, and beat Benefit a week ago, 45 to 20. So they're perfect on the season so far, 8-0, and, oh, and they're leading here 14-6 as we start last quarter action. And the South Poland team only trailing by eight points here. The champs of the Bowie Division against the champs of the current division, Thornton Academy, as you mentioned, 8-0. and oh, Biddeford right behind them at 7-1, and one, and Sanford at 4-4. Four and four. South Poland uh, in that... Portland area current division winning with a record of five and three. Portland at three and five. Chevers at four and four. Deering at one and seven. And Westbrook 0 oh and eight on the season. The Bangor Rams winning the parent division with a record of five and three, followed by Edward Little at four and four. And Lewiston at three and five. And again, Bangor advanced to the final today with a win over Bitterford. And that game will be played at Bowdoin College. That's the winner of this game. So from their own 46 yard line, Julio's gonna put it up. He puts up a long bomb going underneath Ooh. it and catching the ball is number 82, Daryl Crosby. And Crosby goes all the way in for the touchdown. 
A 54-yard pass play from Joe Clodia to Cosby, Crosby. And uh, quickly, the South Pole is struck here early in this fourth period. Where have you been, Darrell Crosby? Beautiful catch. Nice pass. Long pass by Clodia. He put that up nicely, and Crosby did not uh, lose a stride. He just kept going, and he goes into the end zone. So we'll see what the extra point uh, will be now. 14 to 12 is the score. Down by two, they'll probably go for two uh, at this point. With the fourth quarter just underway, nine seconds into the fourth quarter, they score. And they want a timeout to discuss what they're going to do. As undoubtedly, they will try for the two points, either by the run or the pass. But that was electrifying play because just to start the fourth period off with a first down play from the 46 from the South Pole in 46 Joe Clutia just unleashed a long pass and uh, going under that was Daryl Crosby who was only a sophomore six feet tall and he got the ball in and raced in the end zone for the touchdown electrifying is right I think that was the play of the game to date. So the South Poland team certainly uh, is not rolling over and playing dead for Thornton. They would like to get into the finals as well as their season has been very productive. Five and three record as well as the Bangor Rams. The other team that uh, lost was Biddeford, but Biddeford's record was a strong seven wins and one loss. And their only loss came the last game of the season in Biddeford to this Thornton Academy team. So they will go for two. And we'll see if it's going to be the pass or the run as Cloutier is trying to get one of his players over. Mike St. John, he wants him on the other side. Probably the play of the season for South Portland right here. And the pass is knocked away and knocked down. That's by Bob Giroux, number 31. So he saves the two points. And the score stands at 14 to 12. So a star running back for the Thornton Academy Trojans comes back to make a, a big key defensive play and bat away the two-point conversion attempt of South Portland. Well, Thornton's had two very key plays, the recovered fumble on their own six-yard line, and now they come up with a two-point possibility knocked away by Bob Giroux, and Giroux has been the person carrying the ball off his fullback position. And he comes up with a gem on defense now. Two very, I can't help but uh, continue to mention how evenly matched these two teams seem in this game. It's a long way, there's a long way to go. It's still anybody's, anybody's ball game. So South Portland will be kicking off, and this will be Jim Anderson. Anderson approached the ball. He bangs a good one down the middle, and it's picked off in there by Sommer. Sommer starts to run up. He's got some good running room. He may break this one as he goes all the way down into South Portland territory. And he picked the ball off on his uh, own 13-yard line and races it all the way down to the 47-yard line for a big 40-yard run back. So just as soon as South Portland scores, number 12 is Chris Sommer. And Sommer runs the ball all the way down to the South Portland 47 yard line. Robinson, the quarterback, calling the signals from the 47. Handoff is to Giroux. And Giroux with a little bit of running room. Gains a couple. This time tackled by number 65. That uh, 89, check that. That would be uh, Don DeCenzo. And Don DeCenzo tackles. Mr. Giroux, but not until he gets down to the 45-yard line. Well, he's been carrying the ball uh, very handsomely. They'll probably call on him as a quick opener. And it is, and he starts again. Nice running room again over the 40-yard line. Down to the 39, this time tackled by Kirstead, number five. There are a number of players I suppose you could go to if you were naming an MVP for this one. Uh, is Robinson, the quarterback for Thornton Academy, and Millington, the running back for South Portland, and Giroux, who's a two-way standout. 
as they get up now closer. And they're on a third down situation for the South Portland 39. Again, Drew, he hammers straight ahead. South Portland is there to meet him. And he gains about a yard with 10.07 remaining in this contest. And 14 to 12, the score is Thornton Academy leads over South Portland. We will be in Biddeford. Excuse me, how about Brunswick? <laughs> we went to Biddeford last week. We'll be in Brunswick at Bowdoin College, where all the pines are. Last uh, time we were there, two years ago, when Biddeford played Bangor in that very sterling Southern State Championship game. So, uh, and the Biddeford team coming out ahead 14 to 7. Another measurement. Well, I don't know. It looks close, Keith. I'd say that uh, they may have to give the ball up. As yeah, they, they stretch it, and it's that much. So with a fourth down, undoubtedly, rather than to give up anything here, the Thornton team will probably have to punt the ball away. Yeah, with that two-point lead, no sense to try anything. Uh, too risky at this point. John Gus will do the punting for the Staunton team at their, as they are at the South Portland 38-yard line. A turnover could, uh, you know, a turnover could could be the difference in this ball game. The way it's been going, I mean, it's right down to the wire, 14 to 12 at this point. And one mistake could mean the uh, the difference here, late in the late going. So the snap will have to be good. And centering the ball will be Scott Sakad, number 71. John Gus, the snap is there, and the kick is a chink shot going down, and Millington asks for a fair catch. And he catches the ball at the 15, his own 15 yard line, with 9.53 remaining in this game. That's Mr. Millington. South Portland not showing any signs of panicking. Obviously, a lot of time left in this football game. They are a very conservative football team, and Millington will no doubt continue to keep the ball, uh, to carry the ball. South Portland continuing to keep the ball on the ground, although I wouldn't be surprised to see Cloutier uh, pick his, uh, pick the time to go to the air and, and gain some yards to get, to get down there because uh, it's important to mix up the plays at this point because time clock certainly right now is working against South Portland so that time the carry was by Keane and he was met by number 56 Dennis Nason so it looks like he may have lost a yard on that and if he did it'll be back to the 14 yard line as they do mark the ball in the 14 and it'll be a second down situation well as you said Claudio will probably have to come out winging sooner or later as the time starts to tick down Get the ball in the air to try to get uh, out of the hole that they're in right now. He fakes to Millington, looks back. He's going to throw long down to the right side. And it's, wow. oh, just missed in there by, again, Daryl Crosby. A great defensive play that time by number 12. And that would be Chris Somer. Somer makes a great play. There he is right there. Well, he went to Crosby a while ago, and it was the play of the game in terms of uh, style and, and finesse and beauty. Darrell Crosby caught a long pass from Cloutier for a touchdown. He was ahead of the pack and just raced in for a touchdown with nine seconds, uh, only nine seconds having elapsed in the fourth quarter. However, the two-point attempt was tipped away Pull you back again. He's going to throw out to the side to Millington, and Millington wow. then can't get there. So they'll be forced to punt from their own 14-yard line. Led a little bit too much. That uh, Mike Willett today was uh, either a little bit leading uh, his receivers a little bit too much or throwing behind him. He just couldn't seem to connect with the big pass play that we know he can do. But he's only a junior. And his uh, and Dennis Walton only a junior at Biddeford, so they'll be back as Millington will now have to punt the ball away from his own 14-yard line. So that missed two-point after attempt that was tipped away, that two-point conversion attempt that was tipped away was a big play. And now South Portland has forced South Portland to go to the air. 
and put them at a very serious disadvantage at this point. And, and having gone to the air and failed to connect, they have given up the ball. Dan Gamash was the receiver then on the punt, the kick, uh, and he was stopped in there by number 62, Andy Burns. Now we'll see where the uh, Thornton team will have to work from. They're at their, at the 40, call it the 46 yard line, almost the 45, the pitch out and the fumble. And there's gonna be a recovery. We'll see who will get this one. Boy, it's hard as they unravel there to see who really came up with that ball. It looked like the pass was to Susie, but no, they say Thornton recovered. And getting up was 86, Mike Tarbock. So we may have to say that he recovered that one. Either him or it might have been Susie who picked it off, but it was just too much unraveling and you couldn't see who had the ball when they came up. Well, the last time Mr. Robinson and company had the ball, he kept it for some seven minutes and 29 seconds. And I'm sure he'd like to keep it again right here and, and kill this ball game. He went, he kept the ball for 15 plays last time. He went 94 yards and ate up seven minutes and 29 seconds off the clock. Here goes Bob Drew as he hammers his way down into South Portland territory. Good carry that time. As he just puts his head down and goes forward, he's a fullback out of this eye formation. And the tailback is Susie. Great so game. Susie is about the 37, 36 to 37, whatever you want to call it. You can see the 30 yard uh, line marker at the top of the screen. Very good contest. The only difference in the game right now is South Portland's failure to con convert the extra point attempt after the touchdown. Pass again in the middle. And this time it uh, is uh, to Giroux again. And he gets a uh, little or no running room. So they're going to have a situation here. We'll see if they have with the fourth down if they are going to go for a first down. And they want to measure this. They seem to have worn down the South Portland defense a bit, particularly, I think, last time they had the ball when they did keep it for seven minutes and a half. Uh, the South Portland defense seems to be breaking down a bit, uh, wearing down. Uh, Thornton is a bit more wide open in its attack uh, using the quarterback option, and they have been passing a bit more than South Portland uh, throughout the game, or at least uh, picking and choosing and, and mixing up their plays a bit and I imagine the South Portland defense would you know uh, it's been out there a long time especially in the second half so we'll see if they're going to go and they appear that Thornton Academy will go for this fir first down it's it's inches and the South Portland Red Riots pull up on the line to get ready for the attack who will it be? Robinson, the quarterback? Or could it be one of the running backs? Another one of those key turning point plays. South Portland needs this ball, so we'll see what happens. Robinson will go straight ahead, and there's a big pileup. And I think Keithfield will have to measure this one. Boy, so it's South hard to do when they unravel to find out where the ball is going to be placed. A couple of the South Portland players don't think he made it, but uh, he didn't need much. Millington down on the bottom of that pack as Robinson was the one that uh, so this is even going to be a tougher measurement I think for the officials and uh, South Portland players across the way feel <laughs> very confident that their team held so we shall see what well, we shall see the fans are all agonizing over this one as are, are the coaches well with the close with the score this close that uh, you wonder or maybe if they shouldn't have punted from from this advantage point but we'll never know as the ball now will unravel the uh, chain markers they'll put it down as the official gets right down how's that need a <laughs> microscope is he gonna get any closer they're all looking and it looks like South Portland is hell South Portland is hell by a millimeter Robinson doesn't think so. 
Well, the South Florida defense, uh, the players were quite confident they held. They were all jumping around after the after the play. And this could be a big turning point too, is they'll take over on their own 36 yard line. Now, if their attack is directed properly, they can they still have plenty of time to get back ahead of this ball game. So first down coming up. South Portland trails by a score of 14 to 12. Quarterback Flutier rolls back. He's going to throw long. It's going down and Ooh. intended for number 20. That was Mike St. John. But there to knock the ball away of uh, being between the uh, ball and the runner was uh, Dan Gamash. So a long pass that time. Flutier can put the ball in the air with the best of them. With a good arm, it'll be Mac back at the 36 yard line. But of course, also at this point, Thornton Academy is looking for the pass more and more often as the time runs and winds down. So they may go back to the running game. That was a first down pass play. As Kodiak calling signals from his own 36, handoff goes to the second man through. This was either Millington, yeah, this was Kane. And he may have picked up a couple to the 37. So third down, Keith coming up for this uh, South Portland team as they try to get down for at least possibly an attempt for a field goal or a touchdown, but they have the Trojans right in front of them and they have a good defensive ball club. Key right here is just pay it. first of all, picking up the first, uh, first down. So fake handoff, now the long pass going down and knocked away and recepted, but they say he's out of bounds. Wow. Oh, a tough play that time by South Poland is Mike St. John caught the tip, but he was out of bounds when he caught it. And South Portland, uh, it's getting late in the ball game, and I guess they're trying to get it all back here in a hurry. Dan Gamash was the player there to tip the ball away, and as we mentioned, it was caught in there by Mike St. John, but uh, he was out of bounds when he caught the ball. The official, as you saw, was right there. So fourth down, they'll have to kick. Millington will put his foot into this one. He bangs a high one. Coming Good. down deep and caught and down to his knee was number 80 again, and that was Dan Ganesh. And so Thornton Academy will take over at 36 yard kick from uh, the 37 down to the Thornton 27. Millington got him out of a bit of a hole with that big kick, but on the other hand, the clock is winding down and Thornton Academy has the ball and they are in command. So Portland would like to get the ball back for for an opportunity to get back at the 537 mark here as we're counting down. Robinson again with a patent run of his. There he goes. He is cutting out, going as far as he may score, but bringing him down from behind was Gerstead. And what a run that was by young Mr. Robinson as he carried uh, on a first down situation. He went from his 27 and they'll knock it all the way down to the 23 yard line. He's tackled and brought down from the rear by Rod Kirstead, but a 50 yard run that time by Robinson. So this is another key play in this game. Very impressive play selection by Thorne Academy. Robinson always seems to be doing the unexpected. And now he leads his team out as he will be working on a first down at the South Pole in 23 yard line. The snap back, the handoff is to Giroux. Giroux still on his feet. Giroux's going to score. And Giroux carries the ball 23 yards for a touchdown. The workhorse himself takes it in as he bounced off a couple of players of South Portland and carries it into the end zone for a touchdown. And that keep makes the score 20 to 12. So now as Thornton Academy has a little breathing room by eight points. And in a conservatively played low scoring game, that that may be enough at this point with about five minutes left to go in the ball game. See what they do on the extra point. They may kick. And the kicker is uh, Paul Tate. Left footed. 
And he bangs it up and it goes through cleanly. And it makes the score at the 4.59 mark here of the fourth period. 21 for Fountain Academy and 12 for the South Pullman team. And the Fountain Academy team cheers it up here at the 4.59 mark. So we've seen five touchdowns in this football game. This afternoon we saw eight in the other playoff game. And seven of them uh, were put on the board by the Bangor Rams as they went on to beat Biddeford. But right now, Thornton Academy is looking to move forward into that state final contest to be played next weekend at Bowdoin College. So teeing the ball up will be Mr. Tate after his uh, extra point kick. Paul will get ready to kick the ball to South Portland. Trailing now by a score of 21 to 12 by nine points. Left footed kicker winning the whistle. As he approaches the ball now and hammers it going down the middle. Taken there. Don't know which way to go was Krangle. Krangle has finally brought down about the 37 yard line, but he was spinning. Didn't know which way to go as he tried to pick up some blockers and the tackle was made by Mike Goulet. Now the Thornton Academy Trojans can pretty much beef up their defensive secondary and sit back and, and almost wait on that pass because Goodyear and company will no doubt have to go to the air at this point. First down at the South Portland 37 yard line, their own 37. Clodia comes out, the quarterback, Joe Clodia, will handle a snap from the center. He goes back, fires the pass over to Millington. Millington has a couple of men out in front of him. Good blocks, he turns, and he's finally pushed out of bounds. Tackled in there and pushed out of bounds by number 86, the captain, Mike Tarbox, but not until he got up to the 43 yard line of South Portland. So the key that time would have been game. to uh, the key that time would have been to surprise the defense and catch Millington uh, in the corner on the side so he could just streak down the sideline. But the defense was over there. And they're working from their own 43. So they'll have to put the ball up now to try to get the ball the game going here. The pass goes to Millington. He's going to put up a long pass way down and it's intercepted as the flag is down at the same time and the pass intercepted by number 80 Dan Gamash and that might have done it right there good interception but the flag went down be interesting to find out what uh, the penalty is all about it doesn't appear that it's going to be on the uh, Thornton player it could have been uh, offensive uh, pushing Whatever it was, it was offensive pushing decline against the uh, receiver that went down the field. Millington threw the long pass. He throws a pretty good pass himself. <laughs> and Thornton Academy gets the ball back. And they will be at their own 23-yard line. One of those plays you pull out of, the, pull out of your hat just hoping uh, to get something going late in the ball game. And Millington... Put the ball deep, but into the wrong hands. And there's an offside being called, illegal procedure. And uh, Giroux was carrying that time, but it'll go for not. And this will put the ball back on a five-yard penalty to the 18-yard line of Thornton Academy. But with a 21 to 12 lead, it looks like uh, they're in the driver's seat at this point because eight points will not do it. They have a nine-point lead. How about an interception and a run back? You want to go for that? That might work. <laughs> First down from the Thornton 18, and Giroux, the workhorse, carries the ball again, but he's hammered down. Tackle this time by number 62 is Andy Burns, and number 44 is Mike Kane. Thornton will get more and more patient, and South Portland will get more and more desperate as the clock winds down. Two yard, uh, two yard gain that time. Puts the ball up to the 20 yard line. The clock becomes a greater and greater ally of the Trojans and a greater enemy of the Red Riots. 
but it's been a, a well played playoff game between two really solid fundamentally sound evenly matched football teams and this game could have gone either way the ball the nose of the ball almost on the 20 yard line so we'll call it the 20 Robinson the quarterback calling signals and he's going to fake go himself. And now he finally flips off to Susie. Susie turns and kissed it as one of the players that hammered him. And number 62 is the other is Andy Burns. And that option play was almost uh, picked off by South Portland. So if the Thornton Academy team holds on, they will be playing Bangor next week. And the two teams did not meet on the season. And both teams, very fine teams. Bangor High School, very surprising today in their lopsided victory over Biddeford, 45 to seven. That their running game from the T formation was just immaculate. And they did not have to put the ball in the air that much. And looks like that uh, number 30 for the Thon team, Sakad, moved a little bit. So it'll be a five yard penalty there. Dave Sakad. Legal procedure, five uh, yards to be matched back. So from the 23, that'll bring the ball back to the 18. As time continues to tick down. South Portland played very, very well. The two-point conversion they didn't get and the big interception by Gamash as the handoff is to Drew, he collides with his quarterback, but he's just a running freight train now as he carries from his own 18 up to the 33-yard line, and that time tackled by number 81, Chuck, Chuck Castleton. We would like to offer our thanks for our accommodations at Hill Stadium to Thornton Academy Athletic Director Brad Leach and is fine crew so from the fourth uh, down situation uh, Gus will kick the ball comes back he bangs a good one scribbles over in between two defenders and it takes a good thought and bounce and finally being down okay it will be back with 115 to go in the ball game we'll be back to Hill Stadium in a moment Beverly Sills talks about her next Live from Lincoln Center telecast. Leonard Bernstein's candy it is sheer joy. It's Bernstein at his very best. It's funny, witty, bouncy, and fun. And the magic touch of Hal Prince brings it to you right from our very own New York City opera stage. Can't wait for you to see it. You're going to love it. Wednesday evening at 8. This is the Maine Public Broadcasting Network, a service of the University of Maine system. And we have a first down situation with 115 left from the 32, the long pass by Cloutier down the middle, a nice reception that time by Crosby again. And he's finally being wrestled back with the official blowing the whistle has him stop now and it'll be uh, Looks like the 42-yard line down to the Fountain 42. So a 28-yard pass play that time. As time continues to tick down, and certainly not an ally of South Portland, as they'll be working from the Fountain Academy 42. Fountain Academy Tigers have had a good, sound, solid football team for a few years now. They've been tough. They've been real uh, competitive and near the top, but never quite making it to the state final. This will be the first year in several that they go all the way to the final. Clodia back again and pass goes to Crosby. And he's tackled a ball, scribbed out, but they say no. They're putting the ball right there as the official max the ball. So it goes to the 35 yard line of uh, Thornton Academy. And timeout being asked for as they'll switch the ball. So we're down to probably about the last play of the game. Second down situation. And it appears that uh, 
Fund Academy will be meeting the Bangor Rams next week on the campus of Bowdoin College. Down among the ponds. The game will be on, by the way, at Bowdoin, uh, from Bowdoin, Bangor and Thornton Academy, the state final. It'll be on at 10 p.m. next Saturday evening. So we hope you'll tune in, MPBN Television, for exciting Class A high school football action. So with uh, probably the last play of the game coming up. It should be a real interesting matchup, too, that game between Bangor and Thornton Academy, two of the most uh, potent offensive teams uh, in high school football. Certainly they've been, each team, each uh, squad has been racking up a pile of points to, over the course of the past three or four weeks. So Cloutier going back, Cloutier to his left. is gonna throw it up for grabs. Coming down, it's gonna be picked off by Thornton Academy's Gamash. And he had two sterling uh, interceptions here in the second half. It looks like uh, Joe Cloutier may have uh, injured his right arm or wrist or whatever, but he is going off under his own power, but uh, not a happy camper at this point. Cloutier will be back for South Portland. He's a junior, a talented young quarterback. And he'll, he'll be sure to lead his team next year and do a fine job, no doubt. As the gun ends, gun sounds the ending of the game. Big win for Thornton Academy, and the fans began to uh, celebrate under their rain hats and umbrellas. Five touchdowns scored in this one. For a while in the first quarter, it looked like neither team was going to score. They were sort of feeling each other out and pushing each other up and down the field. The first score was by South Portland. Scott Millington had a touchdown early in the second period, but Buck missed the extra point. It was South Portland six, and Thornton Academy nothing. And then quarterback Robinson came back to pass to Mike Tarbox with 2.28 left to go in the first half. The extra point was good. It was seven to nothing at that point. Uh, Thornton Academy over South Portland. In the third period, a touchdown. Robinson on a keeper with 1.11 to go in the period. The extra point was good, making it 14 to six. And the final points of the, uh, the in the final quarter, rather, South Portland, Daryl Crosby picked up a long pass from Flutia, probably the play of the game, the most exciting play of the ball game with nine seconds. We were only nine seconds into the fourth quarter. The two-point after Kemp tipped, was tipped away, however, making it 14 to 12. And the final scoring in the ball game was Giroux's 23-yard scamper. The extra point was good by Paul Tate. And the final was 21 to 12. So the Thornton Academy Trojans celebrate now and will move ahead into the state final next weekend. Again, that'll be played at Bowdoin College. It'll be between Thornton Academy and the Bangor Rams. And we hope you'll join us next, e next Saturday evening at 10 o'clock for that ball game. The final again, 21 to 12. <laughs>